Hi there, uh, welcome to my Bolt Visual Scripting tutorial. In this one we're going to cover making a character controller uh, in 2D, so we're going to do a 2D platform controller. Um, I'm assuming that you've already got Bolt installed and set up ready to go. Um, I've just done this nice and quickly in a, a simple blank project and we're just going to create this, this uh, simple character controller. And we'll go through the process of building it with Bolt. So um, yeah, I hope you're looking forward to it and let's just get ourselves started by making um, making ourselves a player right now. So actually before we do that, I'm going to create a couple of sprites. So I'm going to create myself a folder in here and I'm going to call it um, sprites. Uh, the sprites is where you're obviously going to draw some uh, some 3D um, stuff, uh, sorry, some 2D sprites, but I'm just going to create a nice simple sprite right now. So I'll just go to sprites and uh, make yourself a square. I'll leave it as the default name of square and I can drag it into different sprites that I create on my scene. So first up, we'll create the player. So if I go to 2D object, create sprite, and um, I'll rename this one to player, which is going to be my player. And um, the player um, by default, if I go to the sprite renderer, component here you'll see that it's got no sprite so I can just drag the uh, the square sprite onto it and I can change its color here so I think I, I want a uh, I think I want a blue player so I'm gonna leave him nice and blue um I've actually changed the main camera here from the background color to black so I can see things nice and clearly so you can do that too if you want to follow along exactly so um the player won't do anything right now uh, next thing that I need to do is probably create um, a platform for him to stand on as well. So if I do the same again, we create another sprite and call this one platform. And uh, on the platform, I'm just going to drag in from the sprites this square again. And this time I'll make my platforms green for no apparent reason. And just in this uh, 2D Thing, just move it down so I'm just going to move it down and make it bigger so that we can see what's going on so we have um, we have a ground to land on and we have the uh, player sprite to start programming so uh, a couple of things that we're going to need the way we're going to do this is going to be um, with the uh, physics so um, I'm going to click on physics 2d and choose um, the capsule collider and um, it could be just a, a cube collider right now um, However, most of the time the capsule collider will work uh, will work slightly better. The the sprite that we've got here, um, even though it's a square, um, this could be a your own character that you'll draw in a two D modeling, two D um, art program. So I'm just going to stick with this capsule collider, which will probably more more um, closely fit the shape of a character. Uh, right now my we can adjust this as much as we want we can change its size to make it taller or smaller but um because mine's is just a square it's obviously just going to look like a circle it's not exactly a capsule just yet so we've got the we've got the capsule collider and we also need to add from the physics 2d menu the actual rigid body that will give it that movement so um, i'm just going to click on rigid body 2d um while we're here um the material that we use is no physics material right now and the default physics material is actually quite sticky so you'll find it gets stuck to the side of your your platforms and we'll maybe change that later on after we've done a little bit of programming because that's what you came here to do so we'll make ourselves a folder to store all of our bolt scripts in so um, click on create folder and call this um, scripts it's a good name for it and um, on the actual player itself, we're going to create the script. So I'm going to fold this away and this away. Oh, actually, before I fold away the rigid body, let's make sure that it's not going to spin around. So if you see under constraints here, uh, freeze rotation. Um, if we freeze the rotation, then it won't actually spin around as you try and move it um, with its velocity. So now that that's done, I'll just fold it away and we'll just add our first bolt script. So I'm going to click on Bolt and choose Flow Machine and then I'm going to click New for a new macro and then I'm going to put it, nice, keep things organized and put it in the scripts folder and we're going to call this one Player Movement. You can call yours whatever you like but um, Player Movement is the name of this macro and we're just going to click Edit Graph. Now I had mine, I'm going to dock mine over in this um, next to the 
uh, main window here, probably actually close the package manager and close the asset store. So I've got the flow graph up. Um, when you're working on Bolt, it's a good idea to click on this full screen. Um, then when you're uh, when you want to go back to normal, you can just click and tick the full screen again, and it'll just go back. So I'll try and work on this space and give myself some room. Um, yeah, so let's get started on the programming for the character controller. All right, so um, we're going to build this rather than uh, me tell you exactly what to do. So we'll build it together, and I'll show you how how things go together. So I actually don't need the the start right now. So I'm actually going to get rid of it. And this update function, we're going to do everything inside of the update for now, and then we'll refine this. So I've just saved the scene. So what we effectively want to do, if we look at the uh, scene view, is we're going to set the velocity of this guy. Um, the, the rigid body component of it, we're actually going to set its velocity and then um, you're going to use that from input. So um, back to the flow graph, um, and we'll just drag this out. So what we're effectively looking for is some input. So if I um, type in the input, I can get the uh, get access with access name. So this get access, I want to set the name to be horizontal horizontal. Um, make sure you spell that right because it is a string. If you spell it wrong, it's just not going to work. So I've got the horizontal access and if you click on it, um, you'll see if I go actually full screen, when you click on one, you'll see that you can see some information about them on the top left over here. So this, I can see that the, the access name is a string. And if I zoom down a bit, it shows me that the result is a float. Um, and I know from the documentation that it's a value between minus one and one. So let's just set the velocity of the player to the value that comes out. So um, yeah, the value that comes out will be a minus one or one. And what I want to effectively do is I want to set the velocity of the player. So I'll just drag out from the top, select the player, and then I can go to this rigid body 2D component. It's clever enough to know that it's there. And rather than adding a force to it, which will accelerate, I'm actually gonna set the velocity so you can see if we scroll down, 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 we get eventually to set velocity. And um, this set velocity, you can see over here, it can take this an X and a Y value. And obviously from the, the input here, we only want the, the X value. And this is only a single value. So I'm gonna drag out here and I'm gonna do this create vector. That gives me the two slots, two different slots to add in. So, uh, this one, the one that comes out of the input, we're going to just pop it straight into the X so that we know that this value will be between minus one and one. And uh, the zero, we'll leave uh, this one as zero right now and we'll see that uh, this pops in. So the uh, it's always good to continually test. Um, if you've got a second monitor, you can put the bolt uh, visual scripting off and you'll see the action, you'll see what's happening. So um, if I hit the if I um, move the right or left inside the, you'll see the values as if you had both of them up at the same time. So I'm gonna unfull screen this and click on game view here and you'll see that it's moving slightly down. But if I move right and left, you see it does actually move right and left, but gravity's attempting to affect this as well. So um, yeah, let's go back to the flow graph and we'll add in this extra bit. So the, the next thing we want to do is this this value um, that we have right here. Actually, we could plug these through, so we could do it that way around. So um, the value that we have here, we want to get the value, the current value of the rigid bodies, um, the up and down direction. So the y va the y value. That way, that we can add a jump force later on, and it won't interfere with it, and it'll just. Uh, rather than continually try to set it to zero, gravity will affect it, and it won't. You won't. We won't be changing this value. So um, we need to get that um, get that player and get the rigid body and get the value. So I'm going to click Add Unit for this one. So I just clicked on a space and Add Unit. So I'm going to go to Player. I'm going to find his rigid body 2D, and I'm going to get um, get his get the velocity. So if you do the gets. And we do get velocity. Um, I only want the Y velocity. So what I can do with this is I can click over um, like this and I can click on the vector two 
and I can say get y. So I can do this get y um, method that allows me to just get one part of this. So um, I'll plug that straight in. So we've got this is effectively getting the velocity of the of the player's rigid body, getting the y part of it and sticking it into this y. So it should stay the same. So if I make sure we're not in full screen and if I hit play, um, what you'll see is that the player uh, player cube, when this loads up, um, should just drop straight to the ground. Um, the reason it fell through here is that this um, player here um, doesn't, sorry, the platform doesn't have any collider. So I'll just select a platform and add from the physics 2D menu a collider. So we don't need a rigid body, we just need to, we'll just use this box collider 2D. So you'll see now as you hit play, the uh, um, character controller, the player, will drop to the ground and he'll hit. And if I um, push right and left on the keyboard, he moves right and left. So um, things are going well. The next step that we need to do is to, uh, to refine this a little bit. You'll see it's a little bit clunky. Um, we want to refine this and maybe um, uh, this is probably mostly due to doing things the right way, but inside the documentation in Unity, it says that if you're going to be acting on the rigid body, then you should do that inside of um, the fixed update and not the update. So we're going to refine this a little bit and we're going to change this so that we have um, we have this working on um, on the fixed update. So the, the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to um, delete the links to this. And instead of instead of setting directly inside of the update the set the velocity of the rigid body, we're going to create ourselves um, a variable to hold this. So if I click on full screen, you'll see that we have. We'll leave this here. You'll see that we have this option to add in variables, and there's different ones. Graph variables will work just for this um, this instance, so you won't see them inside the inspector. Object variables obviously will work. And you'll see those inside the inspector for the equivalent of a public variable in C sharp. But we're just going to need a, a private variable to, to kind of hold a value for this as we change it with the keyboard input. So we're going to call this um, move because it's going to be the move um, value. And we're going to make the type of this move value a vector 2, which is the, the right and the left. And the default values it sets here are 0 and 0. So we're going to set this move value based on the keyboard input. Um, so if you just drag this out, you'll see that you have a chance now to go down to the uh, variables. And then you'll see that we, we made a graph variable. So it was called, we'll go to the graph and you'll see that there's a set move. So this uh, set move, we're just going to take the values that we get from this calculation um, and I should plug straight into into the uh, green part right there. I put it in the wrong one there. So this this will be a vector two that comes in and it fills out the whole vector two over here. So now that we have this set variable, we're going to use this fixed update. So I'm going to click um, add unit. I'm going to start typing in fixed. Um, so you see that there's a fixed update. And what fixed update is, it happens um, every physics time step. Um, so this will be a little should make the movement slightly more fluid and consistent. So um, inside of fixed update, we want to set the velocity. So what we're setting the velocity to is this variable, this move variable. So to drag it, um, you just drag it out from here to get the variable, and then we just plug it straight into here so that we should be able to, um, in the fixed update time step, we're going to set the velocity of this variable to the value that's calculated inside of update. So this might happen faster or slower than a fixed update. Um, and then we'll make sure that we set that velocity. So um, unfull screen here, and then we'll hit play and we'll just see that it works. So what you should see is it should um, still look like the same, but now we're a little bit cleaner. It should drop to the ground and it should move right and left. The next step we want to take to try and refine this a little bit more is it you notice it moves very very slowly um, and we did introduce just a few seconds ago we introduced the um, sorry the flow graph went in the wrong place mm, right and uh, we introduced this concept of um, of having uh, variables so what 
we're going to do is we're going to create this um, another variable to hold the uh, speed that we want to move and uh, we'll be able to with that we'll be able to um, change it to move at a different speed so uh, my flow graph doesn't seem to want to dock so I'm just going to dock it again so um, back to full screen again so we can see the inputs and variables so we're going to create ourselves a new one this time we're going to create inside of the object uh, variable make an object variable and we'll call it I'm going to call this um, speed and uh, the type for that is just going to be a float so it's going to be a floating point value and I'm going to set that to 5 because um, I found in the testing that that worked pretty well so this this speed variable we're going to use to move the um, move the player so if we look at our look at our code here um, I know it's going to be somewhere here so once I've got the input this value um, what I actually want to do is I want to multiply that by the speed variable so I'm going to close this by right clicking for the X and I'm going to move it up just a touch so I can give myself some space and move this one down so I can give space and from here I'm just going to search for this multiply and you'll notice it's clever enough to kind of guess some of the things that we might need so multiply um, we want to multiply the value that we get so that'll be between 0 and 1 by the speed variable so value so I'll just drag speed on to get it and put it into here so whatever this value is set to is what it's going to multiply by and now that we have that value we need to plug it into the x value for the vector for movement so um, everything should be working pretty well uh, to, to organize things um, you can do one cool thing inside of Bolt where you can hold control and draw a box around some some of the code which means that you can now uh, create this group here and then move the group around as it is and you can rename that group to so like this is the equivalent of adding code comments in C sharp so this will be um, get input and set um, move is uh, is what this block of code does you can still um, go into this block of code and change it obviously if you need to um, so yeah so that's code, code comment so we have should probably test this so we've got um, fairly simple character controller for 2D working and um, when we oops on screen and full screen that one let's try that again so um, hit the play so the um, yeah the character controller is fairly simple but we want to probably put in a jump right now so I can I can move right and left and it does move faster than it did before so that's a good step so the next thing we want to do is probably put the uh, some code in so that we can jump so to make this guy jump um, we're going to try and uh, I'll just move these around a little bit so we get things in place so um, what we want to do is we want to get some input so um, if you go to the edit and then um, project settings you'll see in your project settings I'll just put them here for now that um, there's an input manager if you don't know about the input manager there's a bunch of axes you can use so there is one called jump with a capital J here and you'll see that it's um, the space bar by default so we're going to use that as a way of, um, of just keeping things nice and clean so I want to ask for input after I've got the rigid bodies um, after I've set the velocity based on the move so the if I start typing in input inside that box you'll see that there's an input um, event I'm going to do this um, get button down and this get button down asks for the button name and we just looked up inside the input manager and it was called jump so in theory this um, once we've added in the velocity we can the next thing we're going to do is check to see if um, if we have pressed the button down the way this works is it's going to be a positive or a negative it's going to be a true or a false so we're just going to do this branch um, the branch means that um, if if the thing that comes in is true it'll do it will go out this way otherwise it will go out the false way so what we effectively want to do for this is um, we just want to set the player's rigid body um, and want to add a force to that so that it sort of like bumps up in the air so we'll click on rigid body and we'll look through some of these now the one I'm looking for is the one where you can apply a force mode and impulse force mode rather than a standard force so I won't use this top one I'll use the second one here the modes here um, you can choose between the two so I want the impulse force which is like a like a 
golf club hitting a golf ball, it's an instantaneous change of velocity. So um, the true hook's out here and the value I want is um, I want to set the Y value to something. So I'm just going to maybe make that 5. Um, and in theory, this will add the add a value of 5 when I press the space bar to, um, to that object. So it's always a good idea to test these things, make sure that they work. So um, I'm hoping it's going to work. So if I hit the play now, um, you'll see that I can move right and left and I can also jump. So um, just hitting the space bar will, uh, should make me jump. Um, the major issue, however, is that you can um, you can jump without necessarily being on the ground. Um, so that's probably not a good thing. So we should probably look at how to uh, fix that. Um, inside of our flow graph and it's it's a fairly complex process. So the, the bottom line is we need to basically check that we're pressing the key and something else and we're on the ground and uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. If you see if I just close this right now and I drop this one out you can see that there's an and something else. So this will return a true or a false if both of those things are correct. So um, let me just close that. So the uh, we need to work out how to how to get it on the ground and I'll just quickly go to the scene and show you. So um, on the player we have um, this rigid body 2D and there's actually a really cool uh, method to cast the rigid body 2D shape into the world in a particular direction and a particular distance and to calculate whether there's any collisions, any uh, contacts in that if you were to cast it. So that way we're going to check to see if we're actually um, actually on the ground so let's just go ahead and uh, and get that one involved in this um, in this flow graph so there are a couple of ways to do it I could move all of this out of the way and we could do it all in one and then maybe tidy it up later so I'm just moving this up so I've got a bit of space down the bottom here and we're just going to do this and so we're just going to do this um, and thing so we need to see this other condition so effectively what we're needing is the um, uh, the player. So we're going to look at this player and we're going to go to his rigid body and you'll see all of these different um, uh, methods that we can use. Uh, I'll go straight to the one that we're looking for. So we don't need to worry about contact filters. Honestly, obviously you can do that later um, if you want to look further into it to ensure that you're only jumping on the ground or checking the ground uh, rather than maybe walls or something else. But right now we'll just um, cast in a direction with a certain distance and uh, store the results. So this uh, rigid body 2D cast that you see here, um, it requires a couple of things. So casting, um, if you click on here, let's go full screen so I can show you a bit more. So you can see the information up here. The um, the cast it tells you about casting the shape into the scene, um, the target rigid body, the direction and uh, results. Now this is the one that's um, a bit confusing. So this ray cast hit 2D array, this needs um, this needs this already set up for us in order to um, store the results. Um, and I had one in my practice, so I'll just do that, get rid of those so I can do it again. So the, um, the results is a ray cast hit 2D array. So I'm going to uh, we'll call, I'm going to call this hits and um, then we're going to find the type. So um, we're not going to use boolean, we're going to do a raycast and if you start typing in raycast um, hit 2d you'll see in the list of uh, the things that you can select as you need to look for the list of raycast hit 2d. So we do need that um, and what we also need um, this list of raycast hit 2ds um, we're going to need to have um, we're going to need to kind of like store some of those. So if I drop this in here, so to get the hits and put it into the results here, um, there's currently um, no values in here. Um, and it looks like we've got a little bit of an error. Um, maybe we'll just uh, pretend that it's okay and we'll keep going. So the uh, value that we have for the, um, that comes out of here, if you see from the help, um, the exit, the results is the uh, the number of results placed in the results array. So right now we don't have any in here, um, but we're going to need to add some in here. So we've got some space to store them. Um, but we're basically going to say if this is greater than zero. So um, if this value, so I'm just going to do a greater than. So if the value that we get back from this raycast is greater than zero, 
then we'll get a true from here and two trues um, will also equal a true. Um, if one of these was false, then it would return a false. So the value that comes out of here, we plug back into here so that we branch. So only do this adding all forces if both of these values, if both of these things, this thing here uh, and this thing here with the and uh, are equal to true. So um, I'm just going to pause the video and test it and solve any problems that we might occur um, in testing. Yeah, so um, yeah, I just tested it and uh, this value um, mustn't have liked it So because um, I deleted it and before I'd saved everything. So I'm going to do that again. So we're looking for a list of raycast hit 2Ds. So I'm typing in list of ray. So we're looking for list of raycast hit 2D. Um, and then this seems to be a bit better. I realized there was a little exclamation mark here. So the, the problem I made when I was testing this is that this, this has to have a number of them already created. So this list of Raycast hit 2Ds, if you hit plus, you get this little exclamation mark saying that it doesn't know how to draw that. And that's fine. Um, but we're going to make maybe, I don't know, you, you could make as many as you want, but we need a few because in theory, you're going to, this information will get filled filled out by anything that this object casts into. Um, the second important thing is I forgot to set these values as well. So um, we want it to be the direction we want is minus one and the distance that we want to cast um, will be um, a little bit larger than the radius of this object. So um, we're, we know from, the, from making it that the object is um, the radius is about 0 0.5. So I'm going to make it 0 0.55 just so that it's slightly more than the radius of the player. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go out of full screen again and um, just clear that because that was the error I got when I tested it. So make sure that this is this is now set. If you go back to the scene, you'll see that this player object here is like one unit. So from the center to the to the edge is actually 0 0.5. So I've gone a little bit further than that. So in theory, we should be able to try this out and see what happens. So I'm hitting play right now, wait for it to load up and I should be able to move right and left and jump. Um, it's a little bit glitchy, but uh, you can see that um, I press space when I'm on the ground and it works, but when you press space when you're in the air, it doesn't work anymore. So um, yeah, that's a very basic um, platform controller. And uh, hopefully you understand a little bit more about the flow graphs and how they work. Uh, we can possibly make improvements to this, but to get you started, that's uh, a fairly reasonable introduction to Bolt and uh, creating a character controller using it. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed this one, and if you have any uh, suggestions for more videos, then please comment, and uh, and hopefully I'll get around to making them. So this is my first sort of venture into using Bolt and uh, and using it for 2D, so hopefully you'll enjoy them. Cheers.